friends, welcome back to Farm Girl Diaries. It is part two of our tomato series. So I have a whole bunch of green tomatoes that we are going to can up right now. And this is going to be the simplest and easy, easiest <laughs> canning project you've ever done. So if you missed part one, I whipped out all of my tomatoes. I'm done with them. Um, tomatoes towards the end of the season, due to numerous factors, they're not as good as they were at the beginning of the season. It got really hot, so they dropped a lot of their blooms. The, I haven't fertilized them, so they're not getting as much nutrition as they used to be. The plants are just kind of getting old. And right now, I'm in a drought, so I'm not getting as much water to my plants as they need. So I have plants that were putting on green tomatoes that aren't looking good. Um, the plants, by the time they ripen on the vine, the tomatoes, by the time they ripen on the vine, were just not really kind of edible. So it was time for the tomato plants to come out. Um, however, I always pick my to meet my green tomatoes before I rip out all my plants. So I picked the majority of them um, and we're going to do a project with them today. So this is gonna be a super, super quick and a super, super easy project. So again, if you missed part one, I went over a whole bunch of different ideas of what you can do with green tomatoes. Go watch that one. That's the video directly before this one. Um, but for this video, we're going to be canning green tomatoes in order to make later on fried green tomatoes. So I love fried green tomatoes. I typically eat them more in the winter time than I do in the summertime because there's so much veggies coming in in the summertime that I've made. I think I made fried green tomatoes once this year um, in the summer, but I will make them honestly much more often in November, December, and January um once i don't have as many vegetable options as i used to so fried green tomatoes were making the jarred fried green tomatoes are super easy to make i use wide mouth jars obviously because i can get bigger tomatoes into wide mouth jars i don't have the neck that narrow mouth jars have and what i'm doing is i'm picking the smaller tomatoes and i'm making sure they can fit inside the jar so I have this big bad boy here. He doesn't quite fit. But by the time I kind of get some trimming done on him and kind of get him cleaned up, I can make him fit. Um, and I can sometimes cut, you know, them in half and put them in half and um, I can make them fit. But I really like these smaller ones where I know I can just put the whole thing in the jar all sliced up and it's going to fit. Whereas if I have like a big bad boy, I have to do a lot of trimming in order to get him to fit. So. I like to use smaller tomatoes for that reason. Number two, I like the smaller tomatoes because they're definitely not as ripe, so they're much firmer, um, which I think holds up better in the canning process. So they are gonna go into this, it's just boiling hot water and a little bit of lemon juice, and I'm gonna do them in a boiling hot water bath for 45 minutes. So they're gonna get a little mushy. They're definitely obviously not gonna be as firm as if I was to fry this up right now. Um, but, in December, unless you're buying fried green tomatoes from the store, this is your best chance to get in fried green tomatoes. And again, it's I think it is good. They are a little softer, but they're yours, and it's a great way to use these tomatoes. I do think they are still worth the time and the energy. I will say I'm only doing five pints because I probably do like a pint a month. So I'll like get this whole big pint out. I'll do all this at once. I'll kind of pick on it over a couple of days. Um, so by the time kind of February, March, April rolls around, by the time they've been kind of sitting in their own liquid um, for a couple of months, they get significantly uh, softer. So last summer I did this and I made the last can, I think I made in May. And they were still very good. You fry anything and give it a different sauce and I could fry a flip flop and I would eat it with a good different sauce. So it's 100% still delicious, still edible, still on point. Um, but the consistency did definitely start to break down. So my idea is kind of just to do five pints, just to do what I think I can eat. If I do one pint a month, that'll get me through November, October, November, December, January, February. That'll get me through February. And I think that'll be that'll be good. What I also like to do is I like to freeze my okra. Now I had a really bad okra year. I planted my okra in with my tomatillas and they just did not get along. <laughs> so they 100%, the tomatillos 
sheltered my okra and so I got one very puny okra so I don't have any okra what I like to do is you can chop your okra or dice it into pieces and okra freezes really well so I'm just waving a knife around I am safe with knives I'm not gonna cut myself so if you're concerned don't worry I'm not gonna cut myself but I do freeze okra and then I have done it where I will freeze the okra and do fried green tomatoes and fried okra at the same time kind of just like a little fried feast and it just screams summertime so what I'm doing is I'm just taking my tomatoes and I'm just slicing them into about three quarter uh not three quarter quarter inch pieces um I am taking off and you want to make sure you want to make sure you wash these incredibly well you don't want any dirt on them and then oops I am taking um off the end you want to take off the blooming now this is obviously a big end but you want to take off the blossom end um that's kind of just the rule in general when you are Hold on, I'm trying to get these to, I want them to stack nicely and that just like doesn't happen. Um, the rule in general is to kind of always take off the blossom end as well as the stem with whatever you're doing. There's a lot of old wives tales that for certain things like cucumbers, if you leave the blossom end on, it is going to make the final product, the, um, the pickles bitter. So it's just a good practice to take off the stem and the blossom ends. And then I am cutting away any bug damage. You can see here, this is not a whole, this is not a circle tomato. It's, it's missing its edges. And I'm just cutting away any bug damage. And I'm kind of stacking it in the jar, throwing it in the jar. Um, and I think these fun pieces, they're so small um but there'll be like fried green tomato pickles so i think that's gonna be fine so i'm just gonna kind of keep plowing away i got hang in there um getting my tomatoes chopped up or sliced up i have my boiling hot water bath canner going on the stove and i have just a pot of boiling water we are going to Pop these with boiling water and we are going to add a tablespoon of lemon juice I saw some recipes didn't call for the lemon juice um but I would rather be safe than sorry so I'm gonna add a tablespoon of lemon juice so I know that this is a safe recipe I like I said I've done this before I've eaten it and I've been fine <laughs> but when recipes differ like that I always choose to go the safe route. Oh, and then this one, which looked perfectly good on the outside, is bad on the inside. So we're not going to use any of him. So I'm just going to keep getting these tomatoes sliced up and put into my jar. Okay, I have my five jars done. Now I have done some more packed than others so i have this guy really kind of packed full and i have this guy i could get more in him if i like did him sideways but i do think he looks pretty like that um and so the majority of them i have like pretty packed full this one i just kept him stacked kept him pretty um the reason being that sometimes it's an appetizer when i have people over versus sometimes i just want to have it like you know, just me and then maybe one other person. I don't want to necessarily have a whole bunch of fried green tomatoes. I just want, you know, I just want a little bit. So I did different amounts in each one, um, kind of so that once I fry them, they don't necessarily go to waste. Um, that's my idea. So some have been jam packed more full than others. They are going to be like pickles or peaches or anything else kind of you can. Um, if you don't like pack it down, they will float to the top. So just keep that in mind and don't be afraid of like packing them too hard. You're not going to hurt the tomatoes. Um, so all I'm doing 
is I am just, and you can see this one, it's already done it. This is the one that I packed lightly. You can see there's a big air bubble here and he rose directly to the top of the jar. So I have to push him down. Um, so I'm just um, adding some boiling water. Oopsie, I heard that one go. Yep, I added my boiling water to the jar and I just had it crack. So I need to get these out. I heard it crack. Let's see if I can get these guys out without breaking it the whole way. I had washed these jars, but they had cooled. So he obviously got this one like jammed in there. Yep. Yep. So that jar just broke. So we're going to toss that jar. I'm going to get these, give these a really good wash, but none of that jar actually broke or glass didn't come out of that jar. So I'm going to get a new jar, put these tomatoes in a new jar, and then add some more boiling water. Um, I have a narrow mouth jar, just real handy, so I'm just going to use that narrow mouth jar. And to cut him to get him to kind of go into the, na the narrow mouth. So we'll just have some smaller fried green tomatoes in this jar. Now, I'm gonna follow my basic canon directions. Put my chopstick down, release any air bubbles. Push the tomatoes down. I'm gonna make sure all the tomatoes are covered by water and I'm leaving an inch of headspace. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a tablespoon of vinegar, or not vinegar, lemon juice, in each one. Perfect. Now I'm going to put lids on them. I'm going to wipe their rims. Because it's just water and lemon juice, I'm not actually really concerned about the rims. They won't have anything on them. You wipe them because you want to make sure that there's nothing on the rims that will stop the ring from sealing. Okay. I'm going to go throw some lids. minutes in my hot water canner but this is what they look like before they go in the canner they look pretty good huh
you want the water in the canner to be an inch above the jars that you're processing. So there wasn't enough water in my canner. So I added the rest of my boiling water that I used to fill the tomato jars with. I just added that into the canner. So now it is over the jars and ready to go. So my water is boiling, actively boiling. I'm going to set the uh, timer for 45 minutes. I'm going to let it can away.